Good morning and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. I am Varun Basin, solution consultant from DX Sherpa Private Limited. First of all, thank you everyone for joining us on this webinar. Uh, so today in today's webinar we are going to talk about how to align service now with ITIL 4. So ITIL 4 is the latest released framework on IT infrastructure uh, on IT service management which has been released from Axelos. So without waiting further let us get started with the webinar. So our agenda for today would be that first we will have an introduction to ITIL4 framework and I'll also introduce you all to ServiceNow portfolio. And we will do a small one-to-one -one mapping over there in order to see what kind of different ServiceNow portfolio is there in the organization and what is the ITIL4 framework and what is the new uh, model that they are coming up with and after that we are going to see that how to move from a technology to a service mindset after the and after which we are going to discuss briefly on improving the service management maturity how that can be achieved then we are going to talk about establishing proactive service delivery environment and ultimately which is the conclusion and also the primary objective of this webinar it is that how a single enterprise framework can be mapped over a single centralized platform which is hosting a number of solutions which can fit the different areas and different practices of the framework so let's get started in in Q4 2018, ITIL finally launched their new version, uh, their upgraded version of ITIL from V3. Now it is called as ITIL 4. The updated framework has evolved from service lifecycle model to service value system model. And this model is uh, more or less adopted and adapted from lean transformation framework. The core of service value system over here, as you can see, uh, so we have like two different areas that we are going to discuss right now. So the first is the service value system. And it, if you can see in the diagram on the centralized area of the service value system, we talk about service value chain. So we can essentially say that the core of service value system is service value chain, which is overall enclosed by the guiding principles, the governance, and the overall practices which have been introduced in ITIL along with continual improvement. So any practice of ITIL will have certain activities and steps which are executed. So those activities and steps or the processes or procedures which are being executed as a part of any practice, okay, they are ultimately going to be executed by using a combination of service value chain stages and which is usually triggered triggered as a result of certain demand from certain customer or from end user or maybe from business needs or business requirements and the output would be focused on the value and the value generation and the value delivery which is usually in the form of products and services as we will see further that ITIL now has around 34 practices and each practice has certain procedures, activities and steps which will be executed. And these steps will go through different stages of planning, engage, design and transition, obtain and build and deliver and support and ultimately uh, improve. As part of this webinar, we will see how ServiceNow portfolio falls and is mapped around the ITIL4 framework. The conclusion of the webinar, as I, said, as I said earlier, is how a single framework and single platform can help us to easily carry out the work. So let us see the ITIL4 practices going forward. Now the first thing that comes to our mind is what is a practice? As you can see, uh, we are not no longer talking about processes in ITIL4. Okay, we say that now instead of processes, we have uh, those processes are replaced by something which is called as a practice. So, uh, so the first question, as I said, what, what would be a practice? So as per ITIL, 
A management practice is a set of organizational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. Okay, so any work that you want to uh, execute, okay, that you're executing in your organization, in your organization, or you, or let's say if you're trying to achieve an objective, in order to do any of these two things, you follow a certain set, or you. Uh, use your overall organization's resources in order to achieve uh, a particular objective or execute a work. So that management practice will be a combination of these resources, okay, how they are being utilized in order to achieve that work or in order to execute that work or achieve a certain objective. So the origin of practices are, uh, as you can see on the slide, that we are dividing it into three areas. First is general management practice, then we have service management practices, and then technical management practice. So general management practices are usually uh, adopted uh, from business domains. So these are the different practices which you will see in, the, in your organization which are being executed by different, different uh, functional teams. Okay, so you can see that there is architecture management, continual improvement, information security management, knowledge management, uh, measurement and reporting, portfolio, project management. So these are different uh, practices which are executed in the organization, at, uh, which are executed at business level as well. And different business functions are doing these activities, uh, including workforce and talent management, which is usually executed by HR department or function. So uh, these are those general practices that have been adopted in ITIL4. Uh, followed by that, we have service management practices. So, so these service management practices are essentially the practices we have taken from ITIL V3. So you'll see a lot of familiar names over there in terms of availability management, uh, capacity and performance management. Then there are certain new practices which have been introduced like business analysis. Uh, so earlier business analysis as an activity was executed by a combination of two, three processes. Now, uh, now from here onwards, I'm go actually going to avoid using the term processes over here. I would rather focus on practices. Okay. So in a practice while executing a particular practice, there could be any number of processes or procedures or activities which are being executed. So service management practices we have taken from ITL V3. Ultimately, we have technical management practices, which are used for managing your infrastructure, software development, uh, in order to deliver certain IT services, uh, you use, so sorry, so for certain IT services to be deployed in an environment, you use these practices, okay? So you have an infrastructure management practice, a software development practice. You may have your own framework, how a particular software might be developed in your organization. So all these, uh, frameworks that you will be adopting will be a part of this subset of practice, which is software development management. So these are 34 practices, which are now outlined in ITIL4. And we are going to see going forward, how those practices are mapped across service now portfolio. Okay, so uh, here, uh, we, what we have right now is ServiceNow portfolio. All, so what you can see now is that ServiceNow has products all the way from IT service management to business management to customer service management, uh, GRC, which is governance, risk and compliance, security operations, HR, uh, etc. So, and going forward, we will see how we can leverage the ServiceNow platform and products across an ITIL framework. So let's say your organization has decided to adopt ITIL 4 as a framework. We will see how a single uh, platform, a single centralized solution uh, in the name of ServiceNow, how it can help us uh, to achieve those different practices of ITIL 4. So the first step uh, towards you know uh, towards aligning uh, service now with ITIL would be that ITIL is very much focused around service and service mindset. So uh, and the biggest challenge in many industry that we have seen is that organization at tactical and operational levels are focused around technology domains and have their teams uh, segregated around these technology itself. Whereas the business uh, the business is focused around services at strategic levels. 
So the process of changing the industry mindset from technology domain specialist to service delivery specialist is will be a very uphill task. But service now it can act as a phenomenal enabler. Okay, and instead of focusing on technology domain areas, we can help companies to focus on services and underlying infrastructures, which is supporting it by leveraging a combination of solutions which are there in service now like discovery service mapping event management etc so it was essentially going to help us to effectively you know have an organization which can report on services and service performance rather than technology and technology performance from day to day operations all the way to the future delivery decisions so the first thing uh, so the first step and the approach that we are recommending is that the first thing you need to focus on is how to get a service mindset. So the approach suggested here is provided by ServiceNow on how to effectively focus on service management. The focus of service mindset can come from the six steps which are mentioned over here. So each of the step is, a, is in itself a big activity which will be executed at an organizational level. Uh, but we are going to see these steps in very brief right now. So let's have a quick overview. So the first would be to consolidate processes and practices of business unit. So in order to provide consistency across processes, like uh, let's say I have, you may have a process in your organization for employee onboarding, for audit management, for risk management, for project management, for incident management, for change management. So, uh, and similar, uh, processes maybe business processes or IT processes are running in your organization okay so these processes while they are running they will be using certain configuration items they will have certain goals okay so the first step that we do in that direction is we need to consolidate the processes and practices of BU of different business units identify what are the interfacing points between one process to another process what are the key inputs outputs Okay, have a common CMDB across all the processes, be it a process like employee onboarding, which is an HR process, or be it a process like incident management, which is a core IT process. So what we are suggesting is you need to have a common CMDB across all the processes. And you need to have common set of services, okay, we call them as business services, which needs to be linked to these CMDB and CIs, okay and how those CIs are helping to you know deliver a business service and then how those business services are utilized by processes to give the intended outputs that we are looking ahead to achieve uh, so the intended output that we are looking ahead to achieve for business goals and objectives <coughs> sorry <clears throat> so this will help us to essentially give a 360 degree view so once we have all the processes consolidated, all the practices and interdependencies mapped, it gives us a very 360 degree view for us to see how the information is flowing within the organization. Next thing we need to focus on is how to simplify work using visual task boards. So this is a feature which is provided by ServiceNow itself. Okay, so using uh, automated routing, uh, drag and drop of assignments, integration, collaboration, uh, between different teams which can be used uh, through the platform okay and then uh, so we use the combination of these features which are provided by service now in order to simplify and ease the work remember the focus is to get a service mindset so the first thing we did is we consolidated the process identified how the information is flowing from one uh, from one process to another process from one team to another team second is since we know how the information is flowing let's talk about executing the work let's talk about simplifying the work and we do that by using visual task board third that we do is we need to drive action with service and asset awareness okay so you so in certain organizations you there would be offices which are spread across the globe you will have multiple data centers across so having an automated discovery of it assets and cis is a very good way to start things with okay so this would be the third step so in order to achieve a service mindset first thing you did was consolidated processes second using visual task board to simplify the work assignment between one team to another team third is 
have a combination of discovery and service mapping solution so that you can actually define what the service is and what the underlying assets are. And ultimately, once you have established the first three steps, we talk about enhancing the decision-making capabilities using dashboard and analytics, okay? Ultimately, we talk about having one place for users to make all the IT requests. Users should not uh, should not have the need to go to, you know, multiple system. They should not have the need to go to SAP to raise, uh, let's say, some HR request or some uh, procurement request. Rather, everything should be going through a single platform, through a single service, uh, through a single platform, which is managing the entire service catalog for different, different teams and different, different functions. Ultimately, what we talk about is having a single cloud system of record for entire end-to-end -end IT, okay? So we are going to see going forward how this can be achieved. So the next thing, okay. So, so the next thing that we are going to talk about is adopting the service centric using the service now. So the first step in, in that direction is to identify the technologies which are supporting a service. So even if IT operations, it is working in many organizations, it usually works in technology silos. So, uh, but even though they are working in technology silos, it would be reasonable to assume that they are uh, having existing service mapping software solutions. So these are those solutions or tools which discover all the IT components to which are used to deliver a particular business service. Uh, but usually they, uh, they discover the CIs, they discover the IT components at a horizontal layer. Okay. So they are essentially doing a horizontal discovery. So this means that they discover individual technology domains and not an end-to-end -end, uh, service flow. So they discover all of the servers, all of the database, all of the storage and so on, but each domain is disconnected. So, so they may discover uh, the direct connections between individual IT components but usually they are not taking uh, the vertical slice through the entire IT infrastructure. Right. So the first step, as I said, would be to identify the technologies, identify the technologies at different horizontal layers. Step two, identify the relationship between each technology layer and see the, what are the CI dependencies in that. Third, define the service model. You need to know what your services are and how those services are spread across the organization, how they are being utilized, who is the end customer for that. And uh, once you have the service model and the different CIs which are interlinked uh, in order to deliver that service, we the next thing we talk about is documenting a service map and service relationship. So that is that will be a part of step four. So in step three, we define the model. In step four, we document the map and we design the relationship, okay? Essentially in step five, what we are doing is, so we have defined the services end to end. Next thing that we need to do is, we need to monitor each technology for alerts and determine the service impact. What is the impact of that alert on the entire business, okay? And this is something we try to achieve using event management uh, tool, which is there on ServiceNow. Ultimately, we are going to check and assess the impact and risk of changes and incidents on the service environment. So you can see how we started, right? In order to adopt a service-centric approach, we used the service now as an enabler and we started up with the, you know, from identifying the technology at horizontal layers using discovery. Then we talked about defining the relationship using uh, service mapping. Then we were talking about uh, managing alerts and doing correlation of alerts using event management. Ultimately, we are talking about a scenario wherein once you have your discovery mapping and event management running smoothly, you can easily see the impact and risk of various changes and incidents that you're doing in your business environment. Okay, using your ITSM tool. So uh, this is one of the very big areas that uh, in which ServiceNow can act as an enabler so that the organization is not focused around a particular technology, but rather they are focusing and reporting on services. So, so usually, uh, so here we are going to talk a brief about event management and how event management is used. So usually organizations, they have the host of monitoring tools with them. 
but uh, what they are lacking is a single console to manage the alerts for consolidated events so with service now event management we can filter normalize and threshold events to do automatic deduplication and flapping detection okay we can also do we can also correlate alerts with cis and alerts with other alerts and finally create one incident for a group of related alerts so and using event management the system can easily do a quick impact analysis and determine the extent of loss the organization is facing so we will see going forward how event management and service maps uh, they enable us to achieve a proactive service delivery without a human intervention uh, so for now we can swiftly say that service now helps us to ensure that organization at every level is focused around service and service delivery rather than focusing on technology as all alerts incidents are worked based on service impact rather than the technology impact and this is something which is highly recommended best practice of ITIL as well because ITIL it always uh, tells you to you know have that service mindset and any incident which is coming in you need to determine the impact of that incident uh, you need to determine the impact of that incident on the business and business service and the business delivery so let's see going forward so the next topic we are going to discuss is improving the service management maturity so how you can leverage benchmark and performance analytics to have deeper insights and identify the improvement areas now itl framework has always strongly emphasized around continual improvement but the first question for improvement is where to start from the best starting point for improvement is always defined in the right set of objectives or goals. So once you have the right set of objectives and goals, okay, the, once they have been defined, then we need to translate those goals into critical success factor. So, uh, so the question is, what is a critical success factor? So a critical success factor would be mostly uh, the minimum success point that needs to be achieved in order for goal or in order for a particular goal or objective to be met and each uh, of the csf or each of the critical success factor will have a set of four to five kpis uh, so kpis are key performance indicators so these uh, kpis they help us in measurement and reporting of actual performance against the target performance so and service now so this is what ITL best practice always recommends, right? That you need to know what your goals are and what your objectives are, how to translate those goals into CSFs and how different CSFs will have certain KPIs. So what ServiceNow helps to do is, ServiceNow performance analytics out of the box, it provides more than 200 plus KPIs that can be configured across different layers in the organization. So when I say across different layer of an organization, we are talking about uh, across different functional areas as well as different hierarchical areas. So if it comes to hierarchy, uh, we can say that uh, we can see the dashboards and reports from an executive point of view. So if let's say I'm an executive in an organization, I can gain the insights for tracking the performance of my IT or of my business or of my business process, let's say if I'm an HR of my HR processes, I can get the insights and see the performance of my HR and HR processes against the overall objectives that I have lined up in my organization. And you can monitor the state of business service through a single dashboard in the performance analytics itself. Whereas as an operations manager or as an HR manager, I can easily identify the most impactful areas where automation and self-service, uh, uh, what is the current automation uh, level which is being executed? And I can, as an operations manager, I can see what are the current SLAs that we are meeting or we are, let's say, not meeting. Okay. We can quickly identify and take action on the bottleneck areas and redundancies. Uh, and again, we can do all these things based on KPIs that we are defining. The, by using the different uh, combination of business service dashboards uh, and different kinds of performance reports. 
whereas as an engineer or let's say if i'm an engineer or an agent uh, using performance analytics i can see uh, the in application analytics i can easily see the trends uh, that where a particular incident might happen or where could be a peak utilization of a service and similarly i can expedite the resolutions while potentially avoiding large scale service outages so this is how performance analytics helps us to improve uh, the service management environment and so this is something that uh, uh, in using performance analytics every service manage every organization will be using to manage their services and service delivery but what about uh, uh, let's say there is a possibility all your kpis are going green right but you still may want to see how you are performing against the industry or against the industry best practices or this, uh, or across the different companies of the similar industry so benchmark it uh, so service has a feature called benchmark so benchmark what it does is it provides a comparison of kpi for over 3000 service now customer so the question could be what about my data is it also public so the answer to that would be that no the data is anonymized aggregated and normalized users can only see how they are performing relative to their peers on industry uh, on a similar kpi level okay and with over 12 million active users and 8.4 billion transactions monthly no other vendor can provide this level of visibility into the state of id or even business as well and unlike traditional benchmarks that that you may have seen would they require you know significant investment and they provide a point in time report service now benchmark are updated monthly and they provide visibility to to organizations which can help them to drive their improvement initiatives or to drive their continual service improvements you can easily pinpoint the areas of improvement be it in process people or technology and take significant improvement initiatives using benchmarks so so the thing is so far we have discussed about you know having a service mindset how to achieve a service mindset and a service centric uh, approach then we talked about uh, having a measurement framework how service now benchmarks and performance analytics helps to uh, give a very good view of different performances of services across the organization the next step the next step would be once you have the service mindset once you know the current performance of your services let's talk about establishing a proactive service delivery environment and the question is how can you have a proactive service delivery environment so so by using service now by leveraging uh, automation in service now using orchestration agent intelligence and operational intelligence we can help the organizations to increase their esat which is employee satisfaction we can the uh, improve the we can reduce the time which is required to deliver a particular request or a particular service okay we can carry out automatic remediation of events okay uh, automatic remediation of events will help us to reduce the incident impact and it is also going to address one very new area which is uh, there in ITL 4 which is called as uh, uh, in ITL V in ITL 4 we talk about problem management to be much more proactive rather than reactive so from alert itself there instead of creating an incident if i see a particular alert getting generated i need to create a problem do a root cause and eliminate that scenario in the first place so here by using service now's combination of products of orchestration agent intelligence and operational intelligence we can help in achieving you know proactive problem management as well and we will see how okay so we have heard directly from lots of executives as part of our consulting practice and we have personally s- sat with many of them and what we see uh, is a consistent theme in virtually every one of our discussions that we have with them and this is something that can be seen through ITL 4 KPIs as well like percentage increase in proactive problem management 
mean time to resolve, percentage availability of service against the SLA committed, etc. So, so what we do is we narrow. We need to now narrow down the focus to three areas. Okay. So the three areas that will be focused for proactive service delivery would be first would be uh, the first is about visibility. So in order to have proactive delivery, there has to be a correlation of infrastructure to business service. Uh, using ServiceNow uh, discovery and service mapping, this is something we can easily achieve. Okay, we would be able to achieve the correlation between the infrastructure to the business services. So the next would be about availability. And the famous service outage picture here was about the inability to understand the root cause of the issue and identify why the particular service gets unavailable very quickly okay so so and availability is tied to understanding the impact of change root cause and how infrastructure issues they affect the overall performance of the uh, of the company or of the organization and this is again something that we have seen that 80 percent of the service outages are caused by human error that too mostly changes and very less it happens due to bad design of a service. So using ServiceNow event management, we can easily, uh, sorry, using ServiceNow event management, ServiceNow ITSM, and having a centralized CMDB, we can easily identify and focus ab around the availability of a service. Okay, and we can always focus around the fact that we need to make sure that our services are always available, they are always on. If so, if I'm doing a change, what is the impact of that change on that CI? Is it, will it be a single point of failure? Okay, if it will be, what is the backup mechanism that needs to be focused on? So all these things I can see on a single platform. Okay. Uh, the third area is about the delivery itself. Okay. And the key to the success is often we, when we say that it's speed. Okay. And the one thing that we focus very strongly uh, by using ServiceNow is to reduce the time to deliver. So, and we have observed that this is a major pain point and the impact of not being able to meet the expectation can be seen in the form of SLA failures. Okay, and this usually happens because in an organization there are too many systems and there are different uh, teams which are working in silos each team use their, uses their own systems to do a particular activity or a particular task. So as a user, I need to go through two or three different tools in order to make sure my one service gets delivered. Okay. So, but in service now, what we say is that our focus should be on accelerated, accelerated service delivery, have a single system of record, have a single system of action. Okay. And the end user, the moment they request a service, they always expect those services to be delivered as soon as possible. So in service now, this is something we essentially keep it as in one of the core areas, uh, core areas of focus. Okay, we always make sure that we reduce the time to deliver. We we make a single centralized platform wherein different teams can collaborate and work with each other. Okay, we can reduce the that silo mechanism and see where the dependencies are lying and how work can be executed quickly across the organization and so uh, so service now what it does is it takes so for the three focus areas that we have just discussed uh, which is uh, real time service visibility uh, service availability and accelerated accelerated service delivery so what service now is approach uh, for from being reactive to proactive is that first step would be to have a centralized database, a centralized CMDB, something that stores all the information about your IT assets, relationships with business service and service management processes. Second, we talk about to populate the CMDB with information about your, uh, you know, about your IT estate. So this usually starts with discovery, which does the horizontal discovery. So this solution automatically seeks out the makeup of your environment, identifies the infrastructure and records it in the CMDB. And in next step, then we talk about, you know, uh, service, uh, service mapping, where we talk about a service aware approach. So a service appro aware approach, it gives you the added ability 
to use a top down approach to discover and map your business service okay so we use service mapping in order to you know map the different cis with a logical model of a service third we talk about to have visibility into the infrastructure and business service we can proactively identify the issues which can cause outages we ingest the in operational information like events and alerts from existing monitoring ecosystem and correlate it against the business service and cis in the cmdb and this is something we do and we achieve using a service now event management then we talk about what are the potential issues which are identified okay or if an actual outage that has occurred we talk about getting a fast resolution with informed incident response using a itsm uh, module of service now okay we used rule based routing to ensure the right team is assigned uh, for a particular issue and we can see a full visibility of the entire history of activities that have been uh, executed as a part of restoring the services uh, simultaneously we can uh, so in the step 5 we talk about how automatic remediation can happen so let's say once you have identified what the issue is uh, so service now has certain features like operational intelligence orchestration what it does is it gives you the recommended uh, uh, knowledge article it shows your recommended knowledge articles or a recommended remediation approach that you can maybe use as a agent or as an engineer in order to resolve a particular uh, incident or what you could rather do is you can actually configure the automatic remediation in such a way the moment a particular alert or a threshold has breached the operational intelligence is going to take a quick action and will address the incident before it has even occurred at the alert level itself and finally with performance uh, analytics we are able to see the real time visibility of the entire organizational efficiency and how things are being executed and then we can also focus on a proactive problem record for doing the rcas remember the remediation it has done the it has resolved the issue but there is a possibility the alert may come in again so the remedi automatic remediation takes care of incident remediation whereas your uh, resources could focus very highly on problem management and uh, see what the alert was and how a similar scenario can be avoided in future so if we go by this model and if we go by this approach we can essentially transform the it from reactive to proactive because as you can see and as you can easily relate in your existing environment if an incident happens a user emails that incident to the service desk service desk carries out a triage from triage it uh, it assigns the incidents to respective engineers or respective agents at the back end those agents they are then going to identify what the issue is and what the overall business impact is and what the could be a possible resolution they do a manual recovery and they close the incident but using service now event management we can predict the events see what the proactive response could be we can carry out an automatic routing of an incident to a particular team uh, or sorry automatic routing of alerts to a particular team even before an incident has occurred okay the the service now platform engine can easily identify the impact of a particular alert on the entire organization okay what a particular alert on a particular ci is and is and what and how that ci is affecting the entire business service and how that business service is affecting the organization and based on that an automated workflow can be triggered so instead of going to a manual approach we have uh, lots of ks knowledge articles which are available we have certain workflows which are available for remediation so what it does is it gives you a single system of action wherein different uh, wherein different approaches can be taken into consideration for incident uh, for automatic resolution of incidents ultimately once the automated resolutions are carried out a mobile notification can go to an end user okay or to an engineer which talks about that okay we have resolved a particular incident and uh, there is no impact any longer in the organization okay and then that engineer can probably check what was that remedy uh, automated remediation action was taken 
and after that notification they can you know create and register a proactive problem ticket and then eliminate that scenario entirely in the future and this is something as a fact that we have taken from service now themselves what we have seen is that there are 25 percent fewer p1 outages 4000 hours which are saved 20 percent efficiency gains for tier one engineers is, is uh, achieved and overall 2.5 million dollars of annual savings are there due to automated remediation without any human interventions so the next section we talk about uh, ServiceNow suite mapping with ITIL4. So as I said, ITIL4 has around 34 uh, practices. Out of those 34 practices, you can see that uh, almost every single practice can be mapped with ServiceNow products and ServiceNow solutions. So I'm not going to go in all of them, but you can easily see that continual, so ServiceNow practice has a practice of continual improvement. That continual improvement can be executed uh, on ServiceNow ITSM, okay? So that's a dedicated module of improvement in ServiceNow ITSM from London release onwards. Similarly, you have portfolio management. That is something that can be managed using ServiceNow IT business management. Knowledge management, that's a part of the platform itself and that is available across all the ServiceNow products and so on. So the intent is to have a single enterprise framework on a single centralized solution. So if the organization has decided to adopt ITIL4 as a single framework, they can actually use ServiceNow as a single centralized platform. So. Uh, so here you can see that we have uh, different functional and process views, okay? And the only thing that people are trying to do over here is work. So you have HR team, which is executing different processes like hire to retire, then you have IT services and IT teams, and all of them are using different system of records. They're using SAP, they're using Oracle, Workday, they're using Salesforce, or they are using even service now but all those systems are working in silos okay and they in, and in order to deliver one service a different a single employee needs to go through multiple applications to get it done so in case of let's say an onboarding of a resource hr needs to raise the ticket and the work uh, sorry hr first creates that ticket and let's say uh, in, in, in their uh, in their sap so a success factor from there it goes to workday where their let's say employee ids their leaves their policies are updated from there it goes to service now where it uh, hardware is getting allocated certain accesses and it accesses are getting allocated from there it goes to let's say uh, the finance team uh, where the finance team is going to update uh, their payroll data uh, in their oracle in the oracle finance etc so for just one process of onboarding a single HR person has to go through number of different uh, different system of records or do different tools or applications in order to get the work done. But if you have ServiceNow in your organization, what ServiceNow does is it brings it it's bringing three crucial elements to the digital transformation initiatives. So it acts as a centralized platform. It helps you. It acts as a system of engagement. It's a. It's. It acts as a centralized system, which can help you to connect to different third-party applications. So you can use ServiceNow service catalog as the primary request uh, as a primary request solution, wherein as an as a user you can go and log any request, be it an HR request and. Uh, a finance request a finance team request or a procurement request sorry or an IT request or a customer request like that okay so service now can act as a single system of engagement it can take in different requests from different teams okay it can also act as a single system of action we have integration hub we have orchestration okay so using integration hub and orchestration we can connect to different third-party solutions processes the work that needs to be done on those third-party solution, bring the inputs back to ServiceNow and ultimately back to the users who are requesting it. Okay, so ServiceNow can act as a single centralized system of action to get the work done. 
so it has a host of uh, you know uh, ml a uh, ai ml capabilities it has a lot of automated systems which can be used uh, to get the work done faster easier at less cost and at greater success rate it it can also help to you to you know significantly reduce the time to deliver as well then ultimately it, what service now provides is a system of insight so in a system of insight since it is a single system of engagement and a single system of action essentially all the records are going through service now and using performance analytics using benchmarks okay using uh, other real time analytics techniques you can easily identify and predict the behavior of your organization the behavior of the services the current utilization and consumption of the it services you can identify the different improvement opportunities across okay so uh, so system of insight can help so service now acts as a single system of insight which helps the organization to get actionable improvement areas and improvement items it gives a full 360 degree insight that you need to do in order to manage your entire processes resources employees etc then <clears throat> So, uh, so the business outcome or the value outcome of the digital transformation can be realized with ServiceNow system of engagement, action and insight. And it results in a very highly positive outcome. It helps to reduce the data clutter and gives a very clear data flow. Uh, it gives a very clear data flow from one function to another and from one process to another. And having a single centralized platform to connect to multiple tools and application gives a very strong control on the environment and helps in effective collaboration between various teams and technologies that they use. So these are like certain benefits that you can see having a single system of engagement, single system of action and single system of insight that you can see right now available. Okay. So, uh, so this is uh, how I wanted to conclude. I wanted to conclude by saying that having let's say if, if your organization has itl4 and they are planning to adopt it as a single framework you can use service now and service now products and establish a single platform for the single framework to get the work done so that you can have you know increased speed and agility you can reduce your opex cost overall and you can greatly increase your csats and esats in your organization so with this, I would like to say uh, thank you everyone for joining us on this webinar. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot and uh, have a nice day.